the Holy Quran considers satanic whispers to be a type of wahi. Why? Because it's discreet, right? Remember linguistically, what was the meaning of wahi? A discreet, fast, invisible type of what? Communication. Well, that's what satans do. That's what devils do. So that is a type of wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-An'am verse 121, ila awliya'ihim. Allah says the shayateen, the devils, they reveal to their friends from the people. Sometimes you see evil people being suddenly inspired to do something bad or an evil idea pops in their mind. We do believe that people with evil intentions, they're helped by the devils, they're helped by Satan. The whispers of Satan as the Quran states in Surah An-Nas, مِنْ شَرَّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ That waswasa, those whispers of Satan, that's a type of wahi because he's invisibly, discreetly communicating evil, negative messages to you. So the Quran considers that a type of revelation. While we believe that Satans can whisper to us, they don't possess us. In the end, we have free will, it's our choice. It's like a bad friend who's whispering to you to misguide you. If I'm influenced negatively by a bad friend who's encouraging me to do wrong, would you say I'm possessed by a bad friend? No, I'm encouraged by my bad friend to do bad, but I'm not possessed. Because the Holy Quran is very clear. In fact, in fact, he himself, Satan, will say on the day of judgment, when the people will blame him, it's your fault, you misguided us. You know what his answer is? The Quran mentions this. The, Quran, the, the Satan will tell him, look, I had no control over you guys. All I did, I invited you, you guys came running after me. I just invited you and you accepted my invitation. I did not have control over you. So no, we don't believe that Satan can fully possess a human being where you no longer have control and Satan is controlling you, no. But Satan encourages us to act upon our desires and evil acts. But this act of encouragement from Satan is considered wahi in the Holy Quran. You know, sometimes evil people, and subhanAllah that happens more with evil people. Sometimes people, evil, who have this, these evil intentions to hurt others, they do come up with vicious ideas. You're wondering, how in the world did you come up with that idea? That's inspired by Satan, some of it. It really is. Look at dictators, Muawiyah, Saddam, Hitler, some of the things they did. You've got to be a genius to come up with those. Well, part of that is the whispers of Satan. When God sees this person is immersed in evil, Allah says, I won't guide him. So Satan starts whispering, but it's not possession. I'm not sure fully I'm not believe in jinn possession, but they have something like, I think it's called Rukia. Uh, do yes. they have anything of that similar nature? In now with respect to jinn, we do hear every once in a while of some instances of people who are either possessed by the jinn or something happens to them, something unusual where they can't control themselves. You see them yelling, screaming, shaking. I honestly don't know what that is. I myself have seen people like that. Once I was in Najaf by the shrine of Imam Ali السلام, by the grave of the Imam, when they brought a woman, they cleared one section, uh, they brought a woman on a wheelchair with two, three men and she was just, have you seen someone who's electrocuted? That's how she was, just violently shaking, screaming, yelling. I was shocked. I asked, you know, those who take care of the shrine, I, I asked them, what's going on? They're like, oh, this is a normal occurrence here. It's some mad black magic or some jinn has negatively influenced her and they bring her to the shrine of the Imam and she calms down. So I was watching, you know, I stopped my ziyara because this was unusual for me. I wanted to see. So I watched, they took her, those male relatives who had brought her 
and they threw her on the you know silver cage, right? The mausoleum of the Imam Ali Salam, the Dariah. And she started to shake very violently. But after 10 15 seconds, she started to calm down. She calmed down, she calmed down, she calmed down, she fell on the floor. Have you seen someone very exhausted, fatigued? That's how she was. She calmed down, they picked her up, she lowered her head. She, I think, even felt kind of embarrassed because she was yelling in front of all these men. She calmed down and then they left. I told, you know, the caretakers there, is, is, was this like an acting thing or was this real? They're like, no, we believe it's real because we see this happening very often. So sometimes it could be a jinn influencing a person negatively. It could be like a psychological disorder, you know, sometimes where you lose certain control. It could be induced by some types of black magic. Now that's very, very rare, but it could happen. But in the end, the Quran is very clear that Satan cannot fully control us. Maybe he'll do something to us to harm us, to induce a psychological problem, but we can get ourselves out of it. We do have, you know, du'as, verses from the Quran, certain ahraz or hijabs to protect us from that. I'm sorry, you mentioned you asked these, uh, these caretakers, so was that a one-time occurrence with her or it's a recurring thing and she always comes to her? No, 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 this was a one-time thing with her. But they said, you know, it's a common scene. Every day, every other day, they, we see someone being brought with this same condition and then the person calms down after being uh, thrown at the dharih. Scholars, have they published articles or anything along those lines? Talking? Scholars do this, they don't go into much detail because we're not exactly sure what this is. Is it a psychological disorder and the Imam, you know, by the blessings of the Imam, Allah gave them their healing. Was it induced by jinn? Was it induced by black magic? Something else? We don't exactly know. But we do know that sometimes the jinn, in very rare circumstances, can negatively influence us. But not to the point where they fully control us. Not to that point. So the whole idea in the world of Christianity and being executed, has that been discussed among scholars? So by the way, when it comes to jinn possessing human beings, this existed more in previous civilizations, but we do have narrations that state with the advent of Islam and the Holy Prophet Allah banned the jinn from mingling with the human beings, generally speaking. So at the time of, for example, Prophet Sulaiman you did have stories of that existing. So yes, it was possible for people to be possessed by jinns in the past, but we believe after the Prophet, either that's no longer possible or it's very, very rare. Usually I believe with many people it's psychological disorders, but people can explain them so they attribute it to jinn. I believe in most of those cases it's not jinn, it's something else. So the, uh, the example you mentioned is uh, it was uh, the this was in Najaf at the Dariq of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Yes, I was doing uh, on a morning doing a ziyara and I saw that. So yeah. did bring these kind of patients to only Imam Ali or any? No, I assume they bring it to other Imams as well. But this was the only time that I personally saw it. Yes, I personally witnessed it. It was very strange, but she did calm down. She really did. You know, it was amazing. Now, whatever was going on with her, I don't know, but. It seemed to solve whatever she was going through.